Today, I'm going to show you how to make an utterly transportative Mai Tai. Do you want to know a secret? The magic of cocktails is not really about what's in the glass, it's about escapism. They're a small luxury that we can indulge in in our day-to-day -day lives and nothing encapsulates that more than tiki drinks. Done badly, they can be really syrupy and sweet, but done properly, they are a tropical holiday for the price of a bottle of rum. As its inventor Trader Vic supposedly said, you have more fun with a flower behind your ear, a Mai Tai in your hand and good friends. And if this sounds up your alley, then take a trip to Cuba after this with a delicious daiquiri. Tiki was really more than a drinks movement. It was a cultural phenomenon and also gave birth to plenty of really fun shirts. It's fairly easily traced due to its relative recency. Born during the Great Depression, the founding father of Tiki was Don the Beachcomber, who opened his bar in 1934. He certainly deserves his own segment, so we won't delve too deep into his backstory, but safe to say he created possibly the greatest cultural mashup of all time. You've got Polynesian-inspired drinks made with Caribbean rum, served alongside Chinese food in a tropical kitsch setting, all by an American dude in America. The cultural appropriation aspect is definitely an important discussion to have nowadays, but these were far less woke times, and the tiki phenomenon played perfectly to a generation of Americans who wanted the glamour of an overseas holiday, but didn't have the budget. Victor Bergeron, better known as Trader Vic, had always understood the escapism inherent in bars and cocktails. He tells the story of a young couple who were clearly in love but quite poor, but they still made time every single week to sit at his bar for date night to get away from the trials of everyday life and have a little mini vacation. And this, incidentally, is why I have no time for bars and bartenders who concentrate too much on the liquid and not on the experience. It might be the most inventive molecular concoction ever made, but if you aren't made to feel special while you're drinking it, then what's the point? In 1937, inspired by this grand philosophy of bartending and admittedly not a little bit by Don the Beachcomber, he converted his unthemed bar Hinky Dinks to a tiki den called Trader Vicks, so-called because of his habit of swapping drinks for interesting trinkets customers brought in and he used them to decorate the bar. He is credited with quite a few venerable tiki drinks, but undoubtedly his most famous is the Mai Tai. Now, Don has also tried to claim credit for this drink, saying that Trader Vic ripped off one of his creations, which Trader Vic vehemently denied. What I'm going to show you today, though, is very much Trader Vic's original take, invented in 1944. Don's drinks are notoriously complicated, hence the popular misconception that you can just smash a heap of rum and syrups and juices together and that makes a tiki drink. Whereas Vic's original Mai Tai is tight, sharp, well-balanced, and most importantly, boozy. The name Mai Tai apparently comes from the exclamation of one of Trader Vic's Polynesian friends when he presented them with the drink. Mai Tai Roai means out of this world, but please do excuse my pronunciation. If you'd like me to delve deeper into some of Don the Beachcomber's complex concoctions, then drop a comment below and let's get to making a Mai Tai. So I did refer to this recipe as Trader Vic's original Mai Tai, and that's because he then went on to create a kind of tourist friendly version in Hawaii, which was sweeter with the addition of um, some various fruit juices. And so this is where much of the confusion around this drink comes from, uh, as the second version was very popular. And I'll definitely hold my hands up. When I first started bartending, I put orange juice in my Mai Tais, fresh squeezed, but still. Uh, the classic though just really heroes the rum, which was originally Ray and nephew 17 year old. Vic had to tweak the recipes a few times as supplies of the first Ray and nephew 17 year old and then 15 year old dried up. Um, so it's basically now impossible to recreate the original, but the main point is that the rum should really shine through. So make sure you're using something full bodied and flavored and that you like. Um, so I'm using Appleton Estate because it's Jamaican like the original and really robust and a little bit funky. Some people like to blend rums or even float a darker rum on top. For instance, a molasses based rum like Gosling's to make it really punchy. Personally, I prefer to keep it a little bit simple and lighter, but definitely feel free to experiment until you find your sweet spot. Orja is an almond based syrup that's used a lot in tiki drinks because um, the nuttiness plays really nicely with rum and other tropical fruit flavors. You can make it and I'll pop a recipe below, but it's a bit fiddly and honestly, I tend not to bother. I just leave it to the experts, um, but just make sure you use a good quality one. Uh, I'm using Monin, uh, which is almost always a safe bet for syrups and very widely available. In a pinch, you could even use um, some Amaretto. It's one of those bottles that everyone seems to have a random one of in the back of their cupboard. Uh, and this is a great use for it. 
just maybe pair back the other kind of sweeteners um, a little bit to balance that out. And curacao and triple sec are really just different names for orange liqueur. The differences are more historical and stylistic, so it's really about going with a brand that you like. As always, I'm going with my favorite, the zingy and quite dry marionette curacao. But Pierre Ferrand Triple Sec is a great option or Trusty Quantro, again, just a little bit sweeter. Now for the garnish, purists argue that this drink should be garnished only with a spent lime husk and a mint sprig, and that symbolizes an island with a little palm tree. Uh, and then you also get a face full of delicious minty aromatics as you're drinking. Personally, I'm always a fan of an over-the-top tiki garnish. So if you do want to go to town and add some other fresh fruit and even a little umbrella if you have it, then absolutely go for it. So first, you're just gonna wanna squeeze some fresh lime juice. And just make sure that you keep your little lime husk, at least, you know, one per drink. Some people do like to pop the lime husk into the shaker while they're shaking. Uh, and that just kind of adds a bit of, of the oils in there too. I just like, once you've shaken it, then you already get a little bit of the lime oils kind of on the skin and it's gonna be up by your nose anyway. So I kind of tend to think that's plenty. So we're gonna go 60 mils of dark rum. This cocktail is meant to be boozy. So if you wanna be a little bit generous, you are on holiday after all. Then 25 mils of your fresh lime juice. 15 mils of your triple sec or curacao something orangey flavored. 10 mils of your orgeat. And then five to 10 mils of your rich demerara sugar. I mean, this one's mostly just to balance out. So obviously it depends what uh, curacao and orgeat you're using. You might only need a little bit, also what your palate's like. Um, so kind of leave that up to yourself. So no mint in this drink, it's just for the garnish. You just want the aromatics. You don't want the whole um, drink to taste minty. So that's everything. Just gonna fill your shaker tin up with ice. Pop your things together. Make sure it's nicely sealed. You have a nice straight line and shake as hard as you can. Grab your whatever kind of fun tiki glass you have or a rocks glass out of the fridge or freezer. Mine's really nice and frosty to make sure that it all stand up to the humidity. And then we're just gonna shake and dump. So that just means pour the entire contents of the shaker in the glass. Super simple, it's meant to be a beach cocktail. You don't wanna be faffing around with strainers. Obviously, if you want to strain on fresh ice, you're more than welcome. This one will just need topped up a little bit because it's quite a large cup. And as we know, the more ice in there, the better. Pop in your straw, get yourself a nice big fresh mint sprig and then give it a little slap just to release all the aromatics. Pop that in right beside the straw so that you're gonna get it up your nose every time you take a sip. Pop in your lime husk and you've got a little island with a little palm tree on it and your Mai Tai. So now you know. I just wanted to take a quick second to say a really heartfelt thank you to our patron angels, um, the guys that have supported us on Patreon so far. I really can't express to you how much it means. We love making this content and are so glad that it seems to be connecting with you. Um, and we just wanna keep making it for as long as possible and you're helping to support that. So thank you. This just looks so inviting. It's so frosty and fresh looking. I just wish it was a little bit warmer in Melbourne. You can see I've had to wear my uh, my warm top under a tiki shirt because we're not quite in the right season for this. Yeah, so fruity and refreshing, but yeah, still really kind of nice and dry finish. I just love the kind of almondy orgeat and I think it works particularly well with these kind of quite big funky rums. It just kind of tacks onto there a little bit of nut and spice as well. Yeah, just super, super zesty. I'm just like wishing I was on a beach. <laughs> this one is basically just a riff on a daiquiri if you think about it. Like it's just kind of rum, lime and sweetener and you see that combination repeated time and time again to very delicious effect. One of my other favorites is the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club, which just switches out the Orgeat for Falernum, which is like an even spicier kind of nutty syrup. Um, and that one's served up rather than on the rock, so more similar to a classic daiquiri. 
Uh, if that does sound like something that you're interested in, then you should definitely hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on that episode, which is coming up soon.